Hi guys, Mr. Z here. Um, so this is my first video uh, working from home. I'm gonna try and use what I have here in the shop to show you guys or demo you guys uh, some of the things that we, we wanted to help you with uh, understanding as far as finishing the assembly of our lab engines at uh, campus there. Um, so I'll try not to make it too much Blair Witch. Uh, I'll do my best. Uh, it's just me and the, the iPad here and you'll hear blue in the background. Um, so basically, we're going to start off looking at my daughter's engine here. So I have her engine out of her truck. I'm going to do a, a re-ring and overhaul on the engine. Um, but it's perfect for looking at removing and reinstalling an engine, what we need to think about and what we need to consider. So if you are working on an engine with a distributor, say you're doing an intake manifold or you're doing a, a distributor O-ring or whatever the case is, you have to remove the distributor. Um, in order to do whatever you're, you're doing as a repair. Um, easy way to do that is, you know, hey, if the thing ran when it came into the shop, uh, if you mark it where it is and you don't move the crankshaft, you put it back to that same spot, it should work again, right? So I can look at taking my, uh, a marker of some type and mark the housing to uh, where it mounts at the base. I can look at taking off the distributor cap. So in this case here, um, I'll just remove the distributor cap. And I can look at where the, the rotor is actually pointing. And as long as I put it back to those two points, it's gonna run, right? It worked before, it's gonna work after. So it's smart to actually look at marking these components. And I already lost my, oh, there it is, my paint pen. So over here, the distributor rotor is pointing down. If I just put a mark right there, I mark the housing. If I remove this thing and I reinstall it, then I should be able to put it back to the same spot and it should start. Right? So that's a smart thing to do. That's an easy thing to do. Um, the only thing that you might have to finish what would be good practice is to um, reset the base timing when you're done. Okay, so um, this one here, the rotor was pointing right there. You may have saw that this was going to give a little spin as I removed it. Uh, if I'm installing it, I need to count for that. I just put it back to that same spot. I look at the cut of the gear and I'm going to put it back and say, oh, look at that. It, it rotated and it went back. So I can be off a tooth, advance or retard, I have to deal with that. Um, sometimes the end of the distributor gear is going to have a slot or an Allen head, uh, some type of drive for an oil pump. In this case there isn't, but it is also something that you'll have to line up so you can adjust it with a screwdriver or something like that. So that would be a, a smart thing and the distributor o-ring I was talking about might be right here. So that would enable me to reinstall this uh, even in the exact same spot uh, that it was. Again. Don't rotate the crankshaft. If you do, then you're gonna have no choice but to do it 100% properly. So, oops, what would be proper? Um, well, we have to TDC this engine, right? So TDC on compression power, that's when cylinder one is going to get its spark. So for us, how do we get there? I can roll the crankshaft direction of rotation. That's really important on timing belt uh, and, and even timing chain engines these days. Figure out the direction of rotation and only rotate the crank that way. That way we avoid uh, timing belt tensioner issues or worn belt issues and skipping uh, a tooth, right? So this is a clockwise running engine. Um, for me to be able to easily get this to TDC compression power number one, uh, I could pull spark plug number one. Right? That's the easy, easy way to do it. So pull that one out and I'm gonna need to put um, something in there. So I can put my finger in here, I can seal it. Don't use something super small that it goes in there and, and if it's gonna be so far in that the piston comes up, it's gonna slice off the end of your finger. Uh, it won't grow back like a lizard tail. So you can plug that off with a finger. Um, you can use the hose from a, a compression tester or a leakage tester adapter. I got one over here. So I can take Oh, that's vacuum gauge.
So I can take the hose adapter from a compression gauge or a cylinder leakage tester. If you're using a compression tester, uh, you'll have to pull the Schrader valve from the end of it. Um, in this case here, I've already removed the rest of the spark plugs, remove number one. I'm gonna take that and I'm going to thread it in till the seal kind of seats, right? I can put my finger over here, I can rotate the crankshaft clockwise rotation till my marks line up. Um, in this case, what I did was I hooked up a remote start switch, right? So I have the starter, have a battery, use some jumper cables to hook up the starter just like it would be hooked up in the vehicle. So I can show you what that looks like. So if I look over here, there's my battery. I have my remote start switch, it's glowing red because I have power hooked up. If I follow that around, I have the starter itself hooked up to the B plus terminal on the solenoid. I have the ground hooked up to the case of the starter. Those are my positive and negative high current circuits. The alligator lead is to the solenoid terminal. Uh, that's where we get battery positive when I'm in cranking. So assuming this is hooked up properly, I take my remote start switch, I give it a bump and it's gonna crank over just like when I hit the key. Um, if you're using the ignition switch to do this, what I would say is uh, disable fuel and spark, okay? Alrighty, so let's see if we can get this set up so you guys can actually see what's going on here. Okay, hopefully you guys can see the timing marks. I've painted them on the, on the cover. So I think, aside from not me being in the camera there, uh, you should be able to see what we're talking about. So, if I go over here and I grab my remote start switch, put my finger over the actual uh, leakage tester, I bump the starter, right, you heard that? So that is the cylinder number one building pressure, right? So at that point, I know that cylinder was building compression, right? Now, if I look down here, and I don't know if you can see it right where my finger is, uh, I've already passed where top dead center was. So following our rule not to rotate it counterclockwise, I can bump this around again two turns, right? Two turns of the crank is one turn of the cam. So to get us back to uh, compression on number one, I'm gonna have to bump it. So I'm gonna do short little blips to have more control. Okay, so right now, that's compression on number one. So all I need to do is continue to roll this till my line right there is exactly lined up. So that should be the very specific position that this engine needs to be to correctly install the distributor, okay? <clears throat> now that should hold true for any engine that has a distributor. Now, kind of a neat thing of the Mazda is if I look at the distributor, and again, I don't know if you guys can see, but I'll try and make it so you guys can actually know what I'm talking about here. Okay. If I look at the distributor, there's a line right here and there's a dot right there, right? So when I'm installing this, I want to have it in the heads up position here. So those marks are lined up and, and to the vertical point. And when I actually line that up, there's another dot, uh, dot on the housing. So right here on the housing, there's another dot. So when I have the line, the dot, and the dot lined up, when that all goes together, when I put it into position, that should all line up, and I should be bang on, right? So it's different than our marked previous, but we've also done this with uh, referencing TDC zero uh, compression power as far as uh, degrees of advance. So that would be my starting point. Uh, this should be close enough with my ignition pickup to get this thing to run. Once it's running, you'd follow manufacturer specification to uh, set base timing. So for base timing, that'll be another video 
I gotta dig out one of my trucks from the barn, create some more space in the shop here, and I'll show you uh, next video on how to set base timing. But this should be correct, either of those two methods, so that this thing will now fire up and start. Okay, so hopefully that was okay. Um, if you guys have any feedback, please let me know as to, you know, if I can change anything, if this works okay. Um, I hope you guys are all well. Okay, cool.